السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Welcome to the first halqa of Tadabbur Beyond Arabic. I am your host Fadl Suleiman, and uh, this, inshallah, will be a very blessed series. Uh, it will last for at least four years, inshallah, if Allah allows us to do that. Um, in which we will do tadabbur, which is pondering upon the words of the Quran. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that uh, uh, this Quran was sent to be pondered. Uh, many people use it in different ways, but actually Allah said, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayate. A blessed book that I have sent down to you, O Muhammad, so that they may uh, ponder its uh, signs, its ayat. Uh, all praise be to Allah, the creator, the cherisher, and the sustainer of this universe, and may his peace and blessings be upon his noble prophet, whom he chose to carry his final message to mankind. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, whoever reads Surat Al-Kahf, which is the first surah that we will start with. So we are not going to start in order. Uh, but in a certain order that I will explain to you later, inshallah, why we started in that order. But now allow me to start with Surah Al-Kahf. The Prophet وسلم, said, whoever uh, reads Surah Al-Kahf on Friday will be spared from every tribulation, every fitna that happens to test people with. Uh, and if the Dajjal appears, then he will be spared from him. The Dajjal is the false messiah. Therefore, the Prophet ﷺ uh, is not only warning from uh, a single person whom, uh, 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 when he appears, he will misguide many people uh, and he will appear towards the end of times, but he is actually uh, uh, warning from a test or a tribulation that have always existed and still exists today and will not cease to exist until the last day on earth. So the Prophet actually, when he speaks about the fitna of the Dajjal, is not actually warning from a single person that will appear in a single generation. He is actually warning from a fitna, from a tribulation that people have been facing since time immemorial and will be facing until the last day on earth. The, war <coughs> the warning is from the fitna itself, from the test. And the Dajjal's fitna will be with regards to religion and perceptions, with regards to wealth and money, regarding knowledge and science, and regarding authority and power. So those are the four things in which the fitna of the Dajjal will be about. Religion and perceptions, wealth and money, knowledge and science, and authority and power. Surah Al-Kahf consists of 110 signs. And when I say sign, I mean ayah. The word ayah in English is, uh, the word ayah in Arabic is sign in English. Um, I believe the term verse is not accurate because verse is the unit of text in poetry while sentence is the unit of text in prose. And the Quran is neither poetry nor prose. The Quran is the third type of text in the Arabic language. It is a divine text. And therefore, every unit of text of the Quran is an ayah or a sign of God, not a verse and not a sentence. <coughs> What is the, there is, of course, a difference between um, the Quranic ayah and the uh, Quranic sentence. And this is explained in the workshop, which I have posted its um, link. And I will post it again. It's called How to Ponder the Quran Even If You Don't Know Arabic. And this workshop is very important. I wish that all of you watch it, inshallah. So I think that... The very first translators followed the footsteps of the biblical translators and used their terminology, and then the rest of translators followed them. Um, and this led to uh, the widespread use of the term verse. 
because of that, you will hear me a lot using the term ayah or sign, which means verse in all translations. So when I say ayah or sign, you should understand what I mean. Uh, I hope this doesn't puzzle you, inshallah. So Surah Al-Kahf is 110 ayat or 110 signs. Ayat is the plural of ayah. 71 of these ayat are stories. And 39 ayat are either a commentary on the stories or describing some scenes from the hereafter. The 71 ayat of these stories are divided into four main stories. The first story is the story of the fellows of the cave. The second story is the story of the two fellows, which many people like to call it the story of the owner of the two gardens, which I think is not doing justice to the other fellow who is also an important person in the story. So I like to call it the two fellows or the two gardens. The third story is the story of Moses and the righteous servant of God. <coughs> and the fourth story is the story of Dhul Qarnayn, which literally means the one with the two horns. Tadabbur or reflecting upon the meanings of the first story, the fellows of the cave, saves people from failing the fitna of religion and perceptions. We said that the fitna of the Dajjal is mainly four types of fitna, four tests, test in religion and perceptions. So if you do tadabbur, if you ponder upon the meanings of the first story, the story of the fellows of the cave, you will be spared from the fitna of religion and perceptions. Tadabbur of the second story, the two fellows or the two gardens, saves from failing the test of money and wealth. And Tadabbur of the third story, Moses and the righteous servant of God, saves from failing the test of knowledge and science. Uh, the Prophet uh, Muhammad وسلم, told us that Moses stood up preaching to the sons of Israel. So they asked him, who is the most knowledgeable person on earth? So he said, I am. As the messenger of that time, he expected himself to be the most knowledgeable at that time. But Allah blamed him and, and, and said, how come you don't say Allahu A'lam, God knows best. So he wondered, is there someone else more knowledgeable than I, O oh God? Let me turn off this WhatsApp. He said, yes, one of my servants at the conjunction of the two seas. He said, and how can I meet him? He said, you take a fish in a container and head towards the conjunction of the two seas. Wherever you lose the fish is where you will meet him. So that's why Moses wanted so much to meet him, even if he had to walk for decades, as we will see in the story. It is because he wanted to learn from someone who has more knowledge than him. Um, read ayah number 66 with me. I wish you open now the uh, translations. And I, and, and I will work from my own translation, which is the translation of Bridges Foundation. It is called Bridges translation of the 10 Qiraat of the Noble Quran and I have put its uh, links you can either buy it from Barnes and Noble or Waterstones or or Amazon or whatever and and actually if you think it is uh, overpriced then I agree with you actually but it is also available for only three pounds uh, in a PDF format so you can get the PDF format on the link that I will post but please Open this translation with me, and I wish that you work from this translation. And by the way, it exists also on, uh, on an app. If you type uh, on the App Store of, of Android or of Apple, Bridges Translation, you will get it like that. And uh, uh, it's for free. So at the end, you can get it for free. Uh, so please open with me ayah number 66 in Surat Al-Kahf. 
<coughs> Open ayah number 66 in Surah Al-Kaf. I wish I can tell you uh, which, um, which page. Um, Surat Al-Kaf, ayah number 66, in page number 200. قال له موسى هل أتبعك على أن تعلمني مما علمت رشدا Moses said to him May I follow you so that you may teach me some of the prudence you were taught Just because one person knows more He wanted to meet him and learn تدبر of the fourth story ذي القرنين saves from failing the test of authority and power many people abuse their power and this means that they failed that test the surah surah al-kahf the cave has several other tarbiya tarbiya means disciplining um, several other disciplining aspects the first one is with regarding to aqidah it disciplines your aqidah it purifies your creed and beliefs and the second aspect is with regarding to the way of thinking. And it helps you think objectively. And the third is with regarding to the values and principles which we should hold to, uh, or the values and principles which we should drop. So please keep these three tarbiyah aspects in mind because every time we come across an ayah or a sign of the Quran which deals with one of them I'll be reminding you of it so before we start the tadabbur of surat al-kahf the cave um, I strongly advise you um, to to watch the videos of the workshop titled how to ponder the Quran even if you do not know Arabic it is on our uh, YouTube channel here, Bridges Foundation. That's not a gas station that I work for. That's actually the organization that have, uh, alhamdulillah, done over 1,000 videos uh, serving the Quran and Tarbiyah and so on. So please go to our YouTube channel and uh, subscribe and and click on the um, uh, notification so that you can be notified with every uh, live video uh, we do we have a lot of arabic videos of course and also some english videos uh, <clears throat> okay so um also if you if you subscribe to my facebook page fadl Solomon, that would be great because also these um, uh, videos will be also on, on Facebook. So let's start, inshallah. Let's always start with al-isti'adha. Isti'adha means to say, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim I seek refuge with Allah from the accursed Satan. So if we have a halaqa and every one of us is reciting the Quran in turn, then the very first one only has to say, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. I seek refuge with Allah from the accursed Satan. Okay. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا. قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدنه ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا. ما كثين فيه أبدا وينذر الذين قالوا اتخذ الله ولدا All praise be to Allah who sent down the scripture upon his servant and has not made therein any crookedness most upright to warn of a severe chastisement from himself and to give glad tidings to the believers who do righteous deeds that for them is an excellent reward wherein they stay forever, and to warn those who have said Allah has taken offspring. Brace yourselves. Are you ready to hear a surprise? We did not start from the beginning like that, not from the beginning of the context. We started from the middle of the context. 
One of the ways of reading the Quran is by connecting the surahs, skipping the basmala, skipping Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, as if the whole Quran is one surah. This is according to Imam. Uh, of course, there are modes of recitation called qiraat. According to the qira'a of Imam Hamza, the mode of recitation of Hamza, and also one of the facets of Warsh and others, one of the ways of reciting the Quran is to recite it all as if it's one surah, skipping the basmala in between the surahs. So if we recite the very last ayah of surah number 17, surah Al-Isra, the night journey, so open uh, the last ayah in surah Al-Isra, read it and connect it with the beginnings of Surah Al-Kahf, you can see a meaning that we cannot see by just starting from the beginning of Al-Kahf. You understand? So read with me the, the very last ayah in Surah Al-Isra and let's connect it with Surah Al-Kahf. وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدًا وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ وَلِيٌّ مِّنَ الذُّلِّ وَكَبِّرْهُ تَكْبِيرًا And say, all praise be to Allah who has not taken any offspring, nor has he ever had any associate in the dominion, nor has he ever had an ally out of humbleness, and glorify him constantly, and say, connected with the next uh, ayah in Surah Al-Kahf, and say, all praise be to Allah. How does Al-Kahf start? All praise be to Allah. The last ayah of Al-Isra commands you, commands the reader. And in, 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 uh, in the very first ayah, so the, first, uh, the last ayah of Surah Al-Isra commands the reader to say Alhamdulillah. And the very first ayah starts by, by fulfilling the command and saying Alhamdulillah. Go back now to the last ayah of Al-Isra and connect it. And say, all praise be to Allah who has not taken any offspring, nor has he ever had an associate in the dominion, nor has he ever had an ally of humbleness and glorify him constantly. After commanding to say Alhamdulillah, it stated that Allah never took any offspring. Now let's go to the beginnings of Surah Al-Kahf and read it together. The first ayah, all praise be to Allah, who sent down the scripture upon his servant and has not made therein any crookedness, most upright to warn of a severe chastisement from himself and give glad tidings to the believers who do righteous deeds that for them is an excellent reward wherein they stay forever and warn those who have said Allah has taken offspring. So ayah number four in Surah Al-Kahf mentions those who attribute to Allah what was mentioned in the last ayah of Surah Al-Isra and warns from this. Do you see how both surahs are related to each other? All these tips are mentioned in the workshop how to ponder the Quran even if you don't know Arabic. So let me show you one more interesting thing in Surah Al-Kahf. Read with me the very last ayah in Surah Al-Kahf. Go to ayah number 110 in Surah Al-Kahf. Let me see which um, page is this. It is actually... Page number 203, 203. Read ayah number 110. Say, indeed, I am only a human being like you. It is revealed to me that your God is one God. So whoever expects to meet his Lord, let him do righteous work and never associate anyone in the worship of his Lord. This ayah speaks about salvation on Judgment Day. 
And the Quran always speaks about salvation for those who believe and do righteous deeds. Salvation in Islam is like a bird that cannot fly except with two wings. With one wing, it will fall down. Faith and good work. Faith alone does not save. It is, as mathematicians say, necessary but not sufficient. Good work alone without faith is also not sufficient. So for the bird of salvation to take off, both wings are needed. But the Quran always men mentions faith first before good work. We always see in the Quran those who believe and do righteous deeds, except in this ayah. In this ayah number 110 in Surah Al-Kahf, righteous deeds were mentioned first before faith. Read it with me. Read 110 in page number 203. Say, indeed, I am only a human being like you, which means say, O Muhammad. It's a command to the Prophet to say that. It is revealed to me that your God is one God. So whoever expects to meet his Lord, which means salvation being to be saved on, the, on judgment day, whoever expects to meet his Lord and be saved. Let him do righteous work, and righteous work was mentioned first, and never associate anyone in worship with his Lord. And then faith was mentioned. Righteous work was mentioned before Tawheed, before to believing in the unique oneness of Allah. One of the main differences between Islam and Christianity is the concept of salvation. I remember in 2003 in the American University, which I was its, its Muslim chaplain uh, in Washington, D.C., I debated against an evangelical reverend who came all the way from Arkansas to give good news to the Muslims. And among the amazing things that he said was, if you do good deeds with the intention that this can help you in the hereafter, then that's a sin in itself. You became saved at the moment you believed in Jesus. You do good deeds because Jesus loves you, but not to help you. In Islam, you say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, and you become Muslim, and still you cannot make sure that you are going to paradise because you need to do good deeds. So the very last ayah of Surah Al-Kahf, ayah number 110, highlighted the main mistakes in the belief system of those who were mentioned in the beginning of the surah. We said in the beginning of the surah, Christians were criticized. Go to ayah number four in surah al-Kahf. Ayah number four says what? And to warn those who have said Allah has taken offspring. Christians. Read ayah 110. Say, indeed, I am only a human being like you. It is revealed to me that your God is one God, so whoever expects to meet his Lord, let him do righteous work and never associate anyone in worship with his Lord. So belief and good work, but good work is mentioned first, this time only in the Quran, to highlight the difference between us and those who were criticized in the beginning of the surah. Right? So ayah number four is related to ayah number 110 which is the last ayah, and at the same time related to the last ayah in the previous surah of Al-Isra again. You see the beauty, it's like, like a chain. Uh, I am sorry that the introduction was quite long, but it was important uh, to say it actually. Uh, and let's start now, go to the first ayah of Surah Al-Kahf in page 195. الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا. All praise be to Allah who sent down the scripture upon his servant and has not made therein any crookedness. All praise be to Allah who sent down the scripture. All praise be to Allah. Stop here and ponder. All praise be to Allah. For what? For all his gifts. And they are many. But the main gift mentioned in this ayah is what? Continue reading. 
all praise be to Allah who sent down the scripture upon his servant and has not made therein any crookedness. So those are two gifts mentioned in this ayah. Sending us the Quran through Prophet Muhammad. That's the first gift. And that the Quran being straightforward is another gift. Notice that he has said, who sent down the scripture, not who gave the scripture or who wrote the scripture. Who sent down the scripture. Every book in the world was written in this world for the world to read it. But this book was not. The Quran is a book that was sent down upon the world from outside the world for the world to read it. It's a book that came from outside the world. It's a book that, was th that descended upon the world. It is the book that reads you when you read it properly. And, and we are going to see examples like that, which will clarify what I mean by the Quran reading your mind, and you will see that. Notice that the Quran is mentioned sometimes as the Quran and sometimes as the scripture, Kitab. Quran is literally recital. Kitab is literally scripture. The two main tools of acquiring knowledge are sight and hearing. The revelation is wahi, and it came in both formats, audio and video. Quran, recital, so it can be heard with your ears if you cannot see or read. Kitab, scripture, scribed, so it can be read with your eyes if you cannot hear. See, God's word will always be available for you in both formats audio, video, Quran, Kitab. It is mentioned by the name Kitab in ayah number 1 and by the name Quran in ayah number 54. Read them with me, please. Read ayah number 1. All praise be to Allah who sent down the scripture upon his servant. Who sent down the Kitab, scripture upon his servant. Open ayah number 54, and 54 is in page number 199. Ayah number 54 in page 199. And we have elaborated in this Quran, in this recital, for mankind, every kind of parable. Do you think that we can find a relationship between both ayat? 1 and 54? 1 says what? Go to number 1. All praise be to Allah who sent down the scripture upon his servant. Why? Why do we need to thank God for that? The Quran read your mind and it read the question, why do I need to thank God for sending the Quran? And it's answering you in ayah number 54 telling you that people should thank God for giving them all kinds of parables to explain all their life aspects in this book. Read number 54 now. It's answering your question. And we have elaborated in this recital for mankind every kind of parable. But man has always been the most argumentative being. For your information. The word kitab came two more times in Surah Al-Kaf, but not referring to the Quran, rather to the records where our deeds are recorded. In ayah number 49, go to ayah number 49. وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابُ فَتَرَى الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَى And the record... Then the same word kitab, which is scripture, but here we wrote it, we translated it to record because that's what it means. It does not mean scripture or the Quran. And the record was placed and you see the criminals fearful of whatever is in it. And they say, woe to us. What is with this record kitab that leaves nothing small or big, but it has enumerated it. Read with me now the first ayah again. We're about to finish. 
Read with me the first ayah again. All praise be to Allah who sent down the scripture upon his servant and has not made therein any crookedness. After reading this ayah, one has to wonder, upon whom did Allah send down his scripture? Upon his prophet, his messenger, and his beloved one. But he chose a different title for him in this ayah. He chose for him his servant. One of the most honorable titles given to Prophet Muhammad is Abdullah or the servant of Allah. Go to, to the first ayah in Surah Al-Isra. So go to, this, to the surah before, which is surah number 17. Go to the first ayah. It is in page 186. Page 186. سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي أَسْرَى بِعَبْدِهِ لَيْلًا مِنَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَمِ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ الْأَقْصَى Highly exalted is the one who took his servant on a journey by night from the inviolable mosque to the farthest mosque. From the Masjid al-Haram in Mecca to the farthest mosque or al-Aqsa in Al-Quds. And in Al-Kahf, go to page 195. الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده All praise be to Allah who sent down the scripture upon his servant. And in Surah Al-Jinn also وأنه لما قام عبد الله And that when the servant of Allah got up So one can think that servitude is negative And that's true. Servitude is negative Except servitude to Allah. Servitude to Allah is opposite to servitude to humans, which we call slavery. Slavery begin, brings upon sadness and distress because of the similitude between the master and the slave. So it is irritating and unacceptable. And because the master is the one who sucks the blood and sweat of his slave and benefits from him. And because the master forces his slave to fulfill his commands, while servitude to Allah brings upon comfort and tranquility, the opposite, because of the dissimilitude of the master and the slave. There is no similarity between us and God. It is not irritating. And because the servant is the one who benefits from the provisions of the master, not the master benefiting from his servant. And because the master does not force his commands on the servant and gives him freedom of choice. He commands us to what's good for us and he tells us about a punishment. It is not an immediate punishment, rather a deferred one in another life, after this life. But if a person stops, for example, if a person stops praying, his heart doesn't stop. And if a person breaks his fast in Ramadan without excuse, his kidneys do not fail or cease working. That's because human beings are given freedom of choice. People can choose whether to obey or to disobey. The punishment is deferred to the afterlife and the reward in paradise is also deferred. So to the afterlife. So it is all about motivating people, not forcing them like it is the case with slavery and dictatorships. Servitude to Allah frees people from being enslaved to their own desires and from worship of pleasures. Those who quit worship thinking that they became free do not know that they are drowning to their noses and ears in worship but not the worship of God, worship of their own pleasures and desires. Let's continue the first ayah of Al-Kahf. Read it with me. All praise be to Allah who sent down the scripture upon his servant and has not made therein any crookedness. The Quran's signs, the Quran's ayat and words are all straightforward. They are not bent to please or flatter any ruler or any tribe or any race. Read with me ayah number two and ayah number three. قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدن هو يبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا ما كفين فيه أبدا. Most upright to warn of a severe chastisement from himself 
and to give glad tidings to the believers who do righteous deeds that for them is an excellent reward wherein they stay forever. The Quran does not have any crookedness and is most upright, straightforward. Why would the Quran provoke the Arabs whom Prophet Muhammad addressed first and before anyone else since the Quran is in their language and since the Prophet is one of them with a surah named after a woman and a Jewess? Arabs at that time did not have respect for women and they were enemies with the Jews, historical enemies even before Islam. Why would the Quran provoke the Arabs by naming a whole long surah after Mary, the mother of Jesus? She's a woman and she is an Israelite. Why didn't the Quran start with a surah named after the mother of Prophet Muhammad, Amina, or his wife, Khadija, or his daughter, Fatima? There aren't even any surahs named after them. The Quran is straightforward. It tells the truth. It doesn't flatter. One of the facets of the Qira'at, the Qira'ah of Hafs, is by not stopping after the last word of ayah number one, just pausing quickly without taking a breath and continue connecting it with ayah number two, so that the meaning becomes continuous, which means that the reciter does not stop after the word crookedness. So he reads it like that. الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر without stopping at عوجه in English it will be all praise be to Allah who sent down the scripture upon his servant and has not made therein any crookedness most upright to warn us of a severe chastisement from himself okay so this book is not crooked so what is it then most upright it's not crooked it's most upright and why was it sent down read with me ayah number two to warn of a severe chastisement from himself and give glad tidings to the believers who do righteous deeds that for them is an excellent reward so this book came to give good news and warn at the same time the prophet is a carrier of good news and a warner at the same time. The good news are from Allah, so they won't be normal news. They are good news of an excellent reward. At the same time, the punishment is from Him, from God, so it won't be a normal punishment as well. It's a severe chastisement. May Allah make us all among those who are spared from the chastisement and win the excellent reward in the hereafter. I have a friend who won a vacation to the Maldives with his wife and it was for 10 days. Allah's rewards are not temporary. So Allah is not going to take you to paradise for 10 days or 10 years. Read ayah number 3. Wherein they stay forever. That's Allah's reward. Wow, that's nice. But who is the warning for then? Read ayah number four. وَيُنذِرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدًا and, and to warn those who have said Allah has taken offspring. Why? The Quran read the question in your mind. Read ayah number five and see the answer and sense the anger of Allah. مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ وَلَا لِآبَائِهِمْ كَبُرَتْ كَلِمَةً تَخْرُجُ مِنْ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ إِنْ يَقُولُونَ إِلَّا كَذِبًا they have no knowledge of it, nor did their forefathers. Massive is the word that comes out of their mouth. They say nothing but a lie. The moment the question comes to your mind, the next ayah answers it. You understood now when I said that the Quran is a book that reads you, not you read it. When you read it properly, it reads your mind. Let's stop here and continue next time, inshallah, from ayah number four. O oh Allah, we ask you your love and the love of whom you love and the love of every deed that gets us closer to your love. O oh Allah, if you grant us what we love, make it an empowerment for us to do what you love. And if you ever deprive us from what we love, then let it be the things that could have kept us busy from doing what you love. O oh Allah, 
make your love dearer to our hearts than our families and wealth and the cool water on thirst. O oh Allah, we ask you your love and the love of whom you love and the love of every deed that gets us closer to your love. O oh Allah, we ask you to love us and let your angels love us and let your prophets and messengers love us and let your righteous servants love us. O oh Allah, let us be among those who love you and who love your angels and love your prophets and love your messengers and love your ser uh, righteous servants. O oh Allah, with your love give life to our hearts and let us be as you love us to be. O oh Allah, let us love you from all our hearts. Let us please you with all our might and let all our love be for you and let all our striving be to please you. Barakallahu feekum and see you inshallah uh, in the in in um, in the next uh, halaqah